So, can you hear the thunder? Can someone hear the thunder? There is thunder coming. And this thunder is coming from a startup that's coming out of stealth at this moment. Can I hear it? Yes. Nathan Linder here, who we have with us, is not only the founder of this Startup X, which uh, I'm going to not ruin the thunder for him, but he's also the co-founder of uh, another startup in 3D printing called Form Labs, which is revolutionizing what he says is the stereolithography field. Um, they've had immense success. And he, you know, uh, most people think 3D printing is an emerging field. He has already moved on to another emerging field. Without further ado, Nathan Linder. Thank you. Thank you, Trond. So this is, this is great to be here. Not, I mean, the first thing I have to say, like, thank you for the act to follow. This is pretty serious following uh, Langer and Bob, not, not only with their tremendous achievement, but, you know, with the comic skills. It's just like, I, I, I hope I at least get to part. But uh, it's, pre it's pretty exciting to be here, and we're indeed launching today uh, this startup that we've been working on for about uh, a year outside of uh, the MIT Media Lab. And it has a, a pretty fancy title, but... Um, I kind of have a simple idea uh, to share with you about you know, how IoT actually transcends to real-world uh, manufacturing. And it's also, um, I'm lucky because the two gentlemen that spoke before me uh, presented uh, pretty serious manufacturing challenges, so you know, biopharmaceuticals and, of course, uh, um, new battery technology. Um, and, and the thing is that uh, people, some, some people at least, uh, think there, there's like two big misconceptions. One is that there's this magic machine that makes everything and you just tell it what to make and it comes out the other side. And that that's misconception comes from uh, mass manufacturing. The other one is that um, it's easy to make stuff. And in fact, you know, this room is super educated, but you know, if I put you um, in places like that, you, you guys are gonna be very confused and you're gonna fail uh, making the product for this company, who is local. Uh, and you're probably, you know, gonna cause a lot of problem in this production line and the whole, you know, 30 years of lean theory is going to fail and uh, a lot of people are going to come rushing with big ideas like downtime and um, you know our yields and then the stock market is uh, going to call you up and then and then bad things happen you get the idea right um, so so the point is it's really all about the people and and people matter uh, and this is partially our, our heritage from the media lab so we're a team of uh, four PhDs and we come from kind of a weird combination of backgrounds and despite what people think about the media let me be clear this is not a company about uh, an LED blinking uh, this is a company about a real product solving a business problem through technology which is key to making something that actually works in the real world so we kind of combine uh, augmented uh, reality machine learning sensors computer vision to, to, to build this new experience but more important like uh, we all spend many years in industry building real products and, and, and spend time on manufacturing line trying to, to build them. So this is where we come from. And actually this, this is uh, the first example I want to share with you. This is from our research with, in collaboration, uh, the generous collaboration of a company called Steelcase. It's one of the leading global manufac uh, furniture manufacturers on the planet. This is one of their big uh, steel plants in Camel West. And you, you can see the complexity here. Uh, it's, it's pretty uh, awesome. And here is uh, some of the technology we've developed. And this is what I mean by uh, you know manufacturing interfaces. This is interfaces that are capable of augmenting a workpiece and and giving what typically is defined as uh, standard work instructions on a workpiece, combined with computer vision to actually augment the piece and and make sure nobody makes mistakes along the way. Um, the reason we did that uh, is because we've been asked to. So this is this is pretty cool because this is the path to discovery what you're actually building. What happened is that we found that this is actually a pretty cool way to teach people what to do, train them, but in the process you collect a lot of information that actually matters um, uh, to, to running a, a, a lean manufacturing operation you know, from the bottom up, from the, from the shop floor to the top floor, as they say. Um, and of course, then we found that it's a much bigger problem because this is not about whiz-bang AR, and we know you guys we are in the valley, so everybody here now is working on AR and wearables and all that kind of stuff. But um, as, as an engineer and entrepreneur, I kind of like technology that works. So, you know, when you think about the era that we are, you know, and, and, and I'm sure you guys have heard about Industry 4.0, and you kind of, we kind of realized that manufacturing is, is in fact transitioning very quickly to custom-made and built-to-order and things like that. 
and this resonates with my other work. You know, I, I help create a 3D printing company, and all we do all day long is think about what would be the age of rapid manufacturing when we actually go online and order a shoe, and it comes exactly your size, and you don't need to, you know, measure your foot in a store and stuff like that. So. Um, the, the idea of this very boring kind of corporate slide is to basically say, you know, manufacturers that don't change the way they work, they're kind of dead in the water. And this is because the average salary of a manufacturing operator in the United States is like 77K. And automotive is 100K. So the manufacturing is very expensive. Uh, so how do you do that? So you can hire a lot of consultants to write very long sentences like this um, and, and read them. Um, or you can start adopting technology that was not invented 30 years ago which is like the, you know, the five layers of existing ERP systems and, and the complexity they introduce, even though it's a great business model for companies like SAP, and I'm sorry if some of you guys are in the crowd, but that, that's, you guys are, you know, need to help that change. The, the reason is, of course, numbers. And you can see the staggering, this is, this is all billions, so you can see the staggering numbers of ERP, you know, MESs, manufacturing execution systems, supply chain management that um, are kind of the backbone of any manufacturing organization, but this huge column of 65.6 billion is the bespoke software, the tablets, the e-readers, all the kind of stuff that you put into manufacturing year after year. Um, and you know, what, like this is this is a, a a huge amount of deficiency that exists that we're trying to solve. And of course, when you look at like all sorts of fancier surveys like Gartner and things like that, they will tell you all the right things. Everybody wants to inc increase quality. Um, have a better manufacturing network, will lower the operational costs. These are all, like I've seen, I, I did a little anecdotal survey, like a decade of things like that. They all come exactly the same. And you ask yourself, like, why is this not changing? So then you look at LinkedIn, and this is, this is like the end of the data science, I promise you. So this is, the, I, I like surveys that don't come from IDC and Gartner. Uh, and this is like the quality assurance. This is about 70,000 uh, or so. Uh, people in quality assurance that make sure that what we do actually works before they ship it. And when you see all the tools that they're using for training and document management and change control and stuff like that, you can see the left bar, it's all manual despite, despite all those tools. So what's happening? So the tools are hard and complicated, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you look at the field like this, uh, this is what we're trying to solve between the nice glossy smart factory vision and like the real world, and this is of course the other end of the spectrum where people actually are still using paper and clickers and things like that. And you see factories that actually have interfaces that suck. They're worse than, this is actually a good one. This is like Windows 95. Um, and this is like the cutting edge technology for time studies. This is called a calculator. If you guys uh, don't recognize, this is a stopwatch and a clipboard. Um, and this is a way that uh, manufacturing share information. And this spaghetti is called automation. Uh, and you program, programmable logic controller, which are really fancy microcontroller packaged in plastic, um, you know, that don't do a lot. Um, and so the workspace has become pretty complex and you ha have a hard problem training the labor that knows how to use Facebooks and have in their pocket a better, a better set of technology than what they're using all day. And they're just like us, right? And of, of course they know how to do it and they get younger. And this is pre-PC era paper-based process that just, you know, how do you even start? Do you start going to, um, you know, implement a ERP system to, to work with that? That's, that's kind of insane. Like this thing is like a hard drive. This bell is kind of like a Twitter feed. So it's weird. And, and, it's like, and, and you get the idea. And what's needed is obvious. Like you need a system that starts from the bottom up for the production worker, production engineer, the, the ops people, and the management people to completely change this. And this is exactly what we build. Uh, we have it here for a demo. Uh, so we'd love to show you that. It's three simple parts. It's a web-based system that uh, governs workflow analytics and management, set of interfaces, and our own IoT gateway that is a super smart and expensive piece of hardware that allows connecting all the things in a plug and play fashion. Um, it allows you to play uh, Legos on a production line. And this is sort of the contradiction of Lean. If you guys know Lean, the one thing you have to know about it um, is that when you find new value to the customer, you have to change. Well, this is of course contradicting to how you build production lines because what, once you build a production line, changing it is super difficult. So. And here's how it looks like today. Uh, so this is uh, from a, a client. Just to give you an idea about this, this is a uh, uh, network appliance, uh, has 45 permutations. Uh, if you miss one step here, that could be a screw, a CPU, a, a heat sink, a plug. That's it. Uh, the contract manufacturer who builds this for the OEM has lost his entire value. 
and that, that also goes for the uh, uh, actual uh, vendor itself. So here you're seeing Pictolite plus uh, a very intuitive sort of interface to guide through someone uh, in their native language. Um, and the amazing part about this was uh, the amount of data that this can collect. And this is what we call a, pr a, a profiler and a debugger for manufacturing. So, in, so this, this is not the data for the specific uh, uh, example because I, I, don't ha I, I can't show you those graphs. But this is some graph uh, from the research and, and, and to explain it on our platform. So you're seeing the work steps on the bottom. You're seeing time t that it takes to complete a step on, on the y-axis. The red is the time, it's called tech time, for uh, the, the term to define how a, a singular operation should take. And the dots are how people performed. So usually manufacturers know what happens at entry point or at certain stations on the line. Here we're talking about per station, per step, uh, at a very granular pace. And this is just one simple uh, uh, analysis we could do. But what's more exciting for us is that we're changing uh, the amount of time that, needs, that we need to actually implement something like that, cutting completely the need for integration because this is just using web technology and consumer electronics, like tablets and phones and, yeah, by the way, also AR that we developed. So we can build something like that on a production line in less than 72 hours and turn on, this is actually when this happened, and basically remove the blinds from manual assembly from discrete manufacturing. And, and that goes to the beginning of this talk, to explain like, why is that important? Um, but to me, the most important thing is the people. Because all, the, the reason this was successful and the reason we were success successfully installing this 72 hours is because we worked with the, the cell of five at the specific manufacturer and they all contributed to the work instruction because now authoring is like dragging and dropping stuff on a PowerPoint, which a lot of people can do. And a lot of people, if you remember the first picture, when you get them on the line, all you want them to do is become a robot. Well, in fact, that's silly because people are the, most, are the smartest robots, the most dexterous robots you have on a production line. And if you know how to use their brain with the correct interfaces, you actually don't need robots. And, and that's sort of contradicting to you know, the renaissance uh, or, or supporting the renaissance that, or the way we think about the human renaissance in manufacturing that needs to drive automation and robotics to people. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing. So the impact of this, you know, there's some obvious stuff um, like, uh, you know, cost of poor quality models. And anybody who's been in manufacturing knows that just to open a uh, shop, uh, you're, you're already lost for scrap and rework and so on, regardless of what you're making. So obviously we can help there. Um, but also we can help people come out of environments like this. And this is literally how people work. So, you know, office environment. Um, and the reason is because uh, most of the money went to this automation end, end of the spectrum or robotic end of the spectrum, and less so for the people on the line. Um, so that's what we're doing, and I'll end here. And we'd love to see you uh, at our uh, demo room if you have a chance. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you, that was clear to everyone, but they actually have a, they, they brought this whole thing here, and it's in a separate room. Unfortunately, they, they're almost full, but I believe there yeah. might be a chance over lunch to sort of peek your head in and take a look, because I have to say, when I came to his offices slash lab, I was completely blown away. This is not one of those startups that exists only on paper. Um, if you see this stuff live, if you really realize that this is transforming 80%, so we talk about Internet of Things, but, but there's an 80% of that that hasn't started yet, and he's starting that revolution. It's immense.